I'm having way too much fun watching you. I know. Yeah. Okay, Henry, just open this beautiful call. Yes. Thank you so much. Ooh. So welcome to this beautiful evening, Radical Heart Resonance, that's sponsored by Good of the Whole and is a part of this greater connection field. And actually, what's really interesting is that, yeah, it's true, I've been working really hard. I'm Shelley Darling, and nice to meet you guys, Darlene and Brian. Um, I think I've seen you, Brian, on other calls. I'm not sure. And Darlene, nice to meet you. Karen, always great to have you here. And Henry, our beautiful sound healer, planetary steward. And John, part of our advisory council for Good of the Whole. So um, and here comes Deb. Welcome. Perfect timing. So Tonight really simply invites us into this expression of living for the good of the whole, deepening into the resonant field, which is really the resource hub for everything that we do. And, and the essence of ultimately who we be, really tuning into that frequency of, of home and uh, in greater alignment with this expression of whole beings in service, living for a greater whole. And we know that in this time of what's coming to me in this time of restitution and resurrection, we just, um, we've been talking a lot about that and restoration. Really the opportunity here is that each one of us has a particular holographic expression of being a planetary healer or steward and we're just here to uplift the planet. And um, part of what was happening to me today was I, I really was diving deep into some of these, um, these seg segments that were segueing into each other, these waves of expression through what we're calling the connection field, which is simply um, where the mentoring stewards of Good of the Whole came together as in a sense, as first responders to what's being called this pande pandemic. But what we're bringing forth is this voice and viral expression of love that we be, you know. And tonight, um, in this flow of what's been happening today is obviously coming together in this resonant field growing our love for ourselves, really seeing us as the beloved in relationship, in sacred relationship to the earth and, and all the cosmos really beginning to be able to feel deep, more deeper into this unified field, this unitive expression. And so we're just welcoming anyone who wants to come in this call and the beauty of which for me is co-hosting this call with Tyson, who we've spent years together um, as planetary healers, as dowsers. Um, we're part of what's called the Sacred Evolutionary Dowsing Consortium, um, as well as being a part of Good of the Whole. We're here to um, really revolutionize and amplify and unify this field of light, this web of light, because we know that the earth is in desperate need. Um, I mean, in some ways she doesn't need us, you know, she's gonna be fine without us. But in other ways, she's inviting us to play collectively together, co-creatively together in 
in raising this vibration, really living from a higher vibration. And with good of the whole, what's been incredibly profound, as well as this, the consortium, is that when we come together and we focus our energies, we focus our love, we can do miraculous things. We can, you know, we can focus on a particular water, body of water, or a land, or your home, or an environment, and uh, using beautiful group protocols and experiences and working with the elementals. Deb works with feng shui. I mean, it's just, we come together and it's really powerful what we can do. So part of this call is experiential as well. Um, last week, we just began to get to know each other. Um, this week, there's new people who are here with us and welcome who's on 817. Let us know who you are and we'll put up your name or you can rename yourself. So um, the first thing is that I want to invite Tyson to welcome you as well. And then we always begin with a resonance attunement. And um, that really supports us um, become, what's, what's coming to me is becoming really the carrier waves. So there's lots of frequencies and sound vibrations, but together tonight we have the opportunity to become a carrier wave of this love and this potentiality to create whole systems health and healing on the planet. So with that, I'm gonna welcome Tyson and bring your voice in and then we'll open with a resonance and we'd love to hear um, from each one of you and we'll listen for, I mean, I have a sense of where the field wants to go but we'll, we'll listen to each one of you and allow that to be part of her expression into this field. So. Well, thank you, Henry, and thank you, Shelley, and uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up. I think this is such a un unique opportunity. It's sort of like um, Mother Earth all sent us to our bedrooms for bad behavior, and we're not allowed to come out and play until we get it right this time. So thank you, Mother Earth, for letting us have this time to, to go inward. Uh, for me, it's a special time because it, uh, for the first time, my inner world is becoming familiar to everybody else and their inner world. In other words, things haven't changed in my life very much with this experience, but I know that other people are learning what it is to be home at home in their home and coming at home in their own bodies, whereas they're before they've been so busy running around doing what they need to do or feel they have to do, that really being at home with themselves is something unique. Like, what do I do now that I'm in this home and I can't leave? Now what do I do and what do I have to do to teach my own children and what do I have to do to keep myself healthy? All these basic questions that we never have time to ask ourselves because we're too busy, uh, now get the time to be asked, and they're front and foremost globally in our consciousness, which is a, a unique opportunity to decide, well, you know, if we were released from jail, which is self-induced, what do we want to do, and how do we want to play on this planet? That we have such a unique opportunity to, to uh, do this different way, and I'm all for doing this different way. So for to me, the day has been, I've been very fortunate. I work with a coach and today it was really like, how do I come home in my body? I had no idea that part, a large part of me was out of body. I work with everybody who's out of body, but little did I know that I was out of body, but anyway. So this is always the irony of whatever we're helping other people do, we, there might be a clue in there that we need to do it for ourselves. So for me, this is a coming home. It's a coming home to my own body for the first time from that part of myself that was alienated through trauma, which I didn't even know about. So this is sort of like the welcome home sign on our own bodies, welcoming ourselves back and welcoming ourselves to the, our own home, which is our home where we live and welcoming us home to planet Earth, which we inhabit. And all those, when we get those all lined up as a safe place to be fully embodied here, to me that we're on the path to enlightenment. We're on our path home to be one with our divine mother and with mother earth. And for me, that journey is really excited, exciting for me to begin to make those steps and to share that path with other like-minded people. And especially those that are on this call because 
we're starting to bring this new language, this new resonance uh, through the field that we're discovering in the sacred evolutionary dowsing as we write a book that we're not even sure what the words are yet. We're waiting for the words to come through. And, and, and even the words that are coming through have a sort of a new meaning to it. So it's sort of like we're reinventing even our own language. So, you know, it's a whole, whole other new beginning. So um, prayers to those that are suffering and those that are going through crisis and trauma as they let go of the past and blessing to all those that are stepping into the new future. So welcome to tonight's call. Let us share together. Thank you. Thank you, Tice. <clears throat> and I was reminded as you were speaking how last week what was really um, highlighting was the sense of be feeling oneself fully embodied and home resulted in becoming radical and bold. And so there was this there was this definitely building of the field where everyone was feeling like, and I, now I'm remembering Deb who was like, I'm going to be outrageous. You know, are we willing to be that aligned and um, connected and really trusting that truth within us, you know, that expression that we can be that, we can flow in that undefined river of love. So welcome. So let's uh, take a few moments and experience this deeper sense of resonance. And so, unless you're driving in a car, invite yourself to close your eyes and just relax into and come home to your body, which is really where Tyson just left us. And I'm just gonna sort of take us in on a quote by Nassim Harami. Imagine how the world would change or will change when humanity realizes its interconnectedness with all life and works together to restore the health and well-being of the whole. So just dropping into our physicality to begin with. But within our physicality is this really temple of human kindness. And so beginning tonight with this full sense of gratitude as we connect in with our heart, And just very natural breaths, just tuning into any resistance and being willing to let go of mass consciousness because there is this huge field of what many are experiencing as suffering and chaos. And we're not letting go of the feelings of those that are, are suffering because they're, it's our body. But we're just dropping in and coming to that place of full connection where we can begin to sense into the unseen, that which is invisible to the naked eye, this source of energy, this vibration, this pulse. And as we just allow ourselves to exhale fully, maybe taking a pause at the end of that breath and opening again to that fresh new breath. We're allowing ourselves to drop deeper, create more spaciousness for us to feel become heightened in our sensitivity. And just notice how you're taking that breath, there's that sense of aliveness. And in some way, this is, pros this is prosperity, this is abundance. And we can just feel those roots going down deep into the mother tonight, acknowledging her as a part of our body. There is no separation. And dropping deep into her core. You might even open your palms up, opening to receive the information that's wanting to come through you tonight to this group, to the whole.
And in this gratitude for who we be, we also hold the gratitude for the full ancestral lineage that has birthed itself through us and as us. The ancestors and their connection and honoring of all relations, the seven directions, and the radical diversity of, of nature and her design, how perfect and how pure. And we feel that as the living waters run through our own being, And as we sense this fruition of life force that's coming up and through us and up, giving us the courage to express, to speak. And so you might become aware of this sapphire blue frequency, this sense of empowerment through our voice around that voice chakra around the throat. And just opening your breath so that can, chakra can open, the throat can open. And together we're holding the sense of security and safety within this collective tonight. And we're seeding the field with our love. And as we're doing that, we're opening to creation itself and we're becoming aware of those levels of consciousness even beyond our crown. So we can play with just even bringing our awareness about a foot and a half above our head. And I love calling this the joy point. Some people call it the soul star. And in humor and fun, I love calling it the J spot. It is this place where this exaltation, when we feel connected to the fully expressed field, that cosmic, the galactical energy, we feel ourselves expand. So just letting ourselves expand, connecting in with this group here tonight, and just feeling that web of light as it expands around the earth you know, some of us have experiences with working with the grids and so just opening to what this universal expression, the field, that which we call the unified field, has for us here tonight. And just take a moment and just allow yourself to feel, to experience and embody this fully grounded. So this is a space where a lot of people will talk about ascension, but it's so vital that as Tyson was describing, we feel the, our feet on the ground, we feel grounded and we feel home. So we're just attuning to this home frequency. So bringing your attention back to your heart, the sacred chamber of love this unification of the divine masculine and feminine. And really feeling this toroidal field. We can talk more about that if people don't know what that is, but it's this energy that exists in all of creation, in the electrons and atoms. It's this, this sustaining energy of all life. Taking a few breaths right here, conscious breaths. There's nothing to do, it's just simply to relax into this field. And that tonight we open to any information for the highest good of the whole. And that we're each receiving precisely exactly what we need to be in service and live mm -hmm. for the good of the whole. And so with that, very gently bringing yourselves present 
into the space. Welcome, Anita. And um, yeah, so thank you so much. So let's just open it up and take one to two minutes and say your name and where you're from, because on this call, it's really nice for us to get a sense of this planetary connection. Um, so it's less about your jobs and what you do, and, but simply like in service to the greater whole and being willing to acknowledge yourself as a planetary expression of whole, whole systems health and healing. Um, what brings you here and what, what's, what's calling to you here tonight? What's emerging? And then we'll listen to everyone and um, get a sense of where we want to go here tonight. And Tyson, feel free to drop in at any point as well. So, um, yeah, so as you feel called, just jump in and let's take a pause in between each person so we can really imbibe and be infused by what they're sharing. So thank you. And I'm whole and complete. Well, I'm Darlene Turner. Hi. Um, and uh, the last two years, uh, literally, we have our stuff in storage. And last year, we spent nine weeks living in a tent with the uh, kitchen and everything outside. I developed a hot shower and in nature and um, really just laying on the ground. And so it's super important for me to have this earth connection. I felt like I was really one of holding that light frequency of calm and peace because there is so much chaos going around. I felt like the eye of the storm. Um, big part of my life has been in fear through abusive relationships. So now just finding my voice, which you kind of brought up there around the throat chakra and starting to speak around those experiences and reach out to those people that have that um, been in dangerous situations in relationships and recovering from fear and standing in their own personal power. So that's been my new found passion. And yeah. Um, and just really in this place of paradise. Um, thank you, Tyson. <laughs> and uh, again, we just are, you know, living in nature. We sleep in a van and we come in through the house and spend time with Tyson and Sarah, but just really devoting our life in, in like everything's in storage. So we're, my home is my heart. So that's a big piece of what we do and where we're at. Yeah, thank you. For, uh, welcoming in the group. Yeah, I'm sort of having an out of body experience because I can see myself in the living room at the same time. So it's sort of interesting. <laughs> uh, it's nice to have Darlene and Michael here. It's a true gift um, to be living in the in community in the mini community in the midst of a lockdown. Uh, and being able to have a garden to play in, a lake to look at, and friends to visit, and neighbors to come over for tea and cookie at the socially appropriate distance, and all that good stuff. Yeah, so uh, very blessed, and thank you, Darlene and Michael, for showing up in my life at the most opportune time. So I feel totally, totally blessed and spoiled rotten. So thank you, and I'm somewhat complete. I'm Brian, and I'm in New Zealand, and um, I feel very honoured to be connected with each and every one of you this evening, from my heart to your heart, 
and I see my journey as just being able to find my voice, which is very appropriate, to reach a wider audience and through my work that I've done to date, actually just help people remember. And it's about remembering the peace and the stillness within. And from that void, we can create anything. And it's actually stepping into that infinite space. We can make a choice and it's about helping people remember to make choices because if we don't make choices, we remain stagnant. But it's making a choice with no point of view, with an ability to see the bigger picture and to help people to see that and to be with them on their journeys and to help them see that actually they do have that spark of divinity within them and that they retrace that and they actually find their way back home quite literally. And it's just been a witness to that and I think people need a witness these days and people are so dissociated. And in my work I find just being present to people and allowing them to speak and be heard with a capital H is probably one of the greatest gifts we can give anybody. And so I need to find my voice to reach a wider audience and I'm working towards that and I am part of CHI and came across this and decided that it would be an opportunity to, I belong to several groups, but this was outside of my usual groups and to connect in a wider way um, at a, at a, this um, through the communication of, of the internet and whatever, but also just recognizing that collectively the etheric web of the earth and mother earth can be we need to be working with her and um, what a privilege and a pleasure so thank you everybody is Henry in near Boulder, Colorado. And just want to pick up that thread of the voice. I was reminded in the attunement of in the orientation papers for a community that I lived at that was an offshoot of the Finthorn community, where it expressed that when we sound our notes more clearly. So that is where we kind of attract that greater frequency. And I guess it invites our, great, our fuller expression. And so with uh, Mother Earth sending us to our bedrooms so that our inner world becomes more clear so the clarity, the greater clarity of when we each um, claim and give ourselves permission, such as in a setting like this, to, to sound our notes, to share our voices, and also um, what Brian expressed about presence is, is also a sounding of, of our notes, it's sounding of our vibrations. So it's kind of an extension of that. And, as we, in so doing, we learn how to inhabit not only our voices, but inhabit our bodies and inhabit our lives in the way that they were intended. And I am complete. So I'll continue that, Henry and Brian and Tyson and 
what everybody said. We just keep that energy field going. Uh, this is John and I'm uh, in Boulder, Colorado. Been here for 33 years. Been part of Good of the Whole for about a year and a half. Year, almost a half. And uh, came right at the right time. Uh, I was a psychotherapist for 25 years, got out of that. Uh, I wanted to expand and, and I found a home in this resonance, dropping that deep inside. And finding a voice is um, uh, very interesting. Recently I've been studying, they, they are now they are now recording and having the the apparatuses to uh, to begin to hear the tonal qualities and the vibrations in terms of sound coming from the celestial uh, heavens. Uh, I was listening the other night. The sun has a very uh, tenor vibrational sound to it. And some of the galaxies are crossing uh, their sound patterns. So there's actually a living universal symphony that is coming down in this beautiful uh, uh, cacophony of, of sound, of vibration being transferred into sound. And so at least one person in this organization was saying, that any music that we hear on the planet is a reflection of that universal orchestra. And we're picking up certain qualities of that. And I imagine our, our voice is the same way. And I'm not only talking about our physical voice, but uh, I think Brian, as you were saying, and I, and I know for me, I'll speak for myself. Uh, I've, I've had I've had a knowing inside a, that I've had a voice for a long time, and yet at some point I began to truly uh, understand my voice, and that came and it's coming more clear as I dissolve the interference of the uh, we talked about before you got on shell. We're talking about um, belief systems and how I was developed my voice into the world from a certain standard and pattern that had been given to me uh, at a younger place in life. As that clears, I realized that this symphony coming through the resonant field, uh, my great gift from that universe is to become a, a, an open and clear reflector of that love uh, back out to others on the planet and to every living, every, every living and non-living thing in our reality. And so uh, I guess my, my love, my, my joy is in being that clear reflector of that cosmic orchestra. And uh, in the resonant field, uh, my voice has found a home that's always been there. And now, studying a little bit as I have uh, in the actual science of what's going on, that we are in absolutely without question entangled with each other. We cannot not be entangled because we are all of the same cosmic dust from the very beginning. And in that resonance, in that larger field, we are all players and we're all singers and we're all voice makers. And at the core, after hopefully this, this beautiful pan, no, I shouldn't say that, not beautiful in some ways, fortunate pandemic, we are having, given the opportunity to begin to come together in that universal energy field uh, our, no, our new orchestra coming up with new, new songs, new, new vibrations, 
and knowing that we cannot do without each other, that each voice coming together in that full orchestra is the resonance that we're talking about. And uh, we, are in, we are entangled in that one cosmic space and, and, um, and this real 3D space as well. So hopefully we can awaken with enough of our brothers and sisters to bring that to fruition in a, in a larger scale. And uh, that's my voice for right now and I'm complete, thank you. Hello everyone. This is Karen in Nuevo Arenal, Costa Rica. I was invited to the Monday Residence Call and that's the first place I've ever been that I found people that really dropped into that deep level as a group and felt so much. Um, so I started coming and now I've been part of the, the mentoring stewards for a very short time. And I just love this group. Uh, this all started for me as an adult, because I know now as a child, I'm, I'm got a lot more that got shut down for a long time. <laughs> but as an adult, it started for me, oh, about 20 years ago when, whatever you want to call it, spirit, God, the universe, pretty much tore my life apart and showed me in a whole new direction. And after being painted into a corner, with my own words back at me, I ended up on a healing table at the Unity in Vero Beach where we used to, many years ago, there was a healing program every Saturday afternoon. And then things just started to happen. And then, so I've kind of been living this way for the better part of 20 years now, um, where I just tune in every morning and on and off all day long and just follow directions. And I learned to, to say, okay, <laughs> no matter how crazy things might sound at times, that's how I ended up down in Costa Rica and other places. I've been led on quite a journey. Um, they recognized me as being on a healer's path. And so um, things I didn't know, but I studied numerous healing modalities and traveled some and experienced many things. I had a period of time with so much um, visually was coming through and that I didn't understand but luckily people were help, would help me <laughs> and being told to to learn this go read that you know in so many different directions so so but now a lot of it all has been coming together for several years now and there's different different programs and different things I've been working with people on um, the Harmonic of Life for One and the, Ab the Abundance Trust Fund, which turned out not to have anything to do with money <laughs> and more. And I was told I had to create a Crystal and Light Foundation. Um, and at the most unusual place that I would think of to have my to my my mission. My, my assignment, I call it, come through is creating a new paradigm of being. Came through at a, at what would have been an entrepreneurial business conference. But that entrepreneurial business conference turned out to be based on universal laws, natural law, and very different than any other business I'd ever experienced. So it kind of made sense. It was a little overwhelming. I, I had, couldn't come up with a snap. So I, I left the room, found a quiet place, stopped panicking because I didn't know what I was going to say 
and asked for just the right words and that's what came through and I still remember just standing there. <laughs> Western Hotel of LAX at the time, it's not a Western anymore. And when I caught my breath, I remember saying, but, but how do I do that? And how do I snap that? Snap is like an elevator speech with the request. Because I didn't even know why I was at the conference. I was just told I had to go. And so I did. <laughs> I had no business at the time. But, at the, but I'd had the remnants of knowing that I was to build something. A healing center, community. And, and so it's like, okay. So we just went with that. So now it's become a lot. There's been so much more clarity over the years. So much has, more has come. So many people have come. I gained so much from being at that conference and all these other places where people show up and will be part of what I'm here to do. And part of that, a big part of that, will be building a community, both virtual but also physical, off the grid, sustainable, holistic, and green community prototypes to be duplicated worldwide. And of course, all based on all of these principles and ways of being, because this is one way we can shift consciousness if we actually live that way on a daily basis. I didn't understand a lot of it for a long time, but, um, but I'm starting to see how this will matter. So I think that I'm, I'm as complete as I can be for now. And I'm so grateful to be here. You have to excuse me, I have to let a cat out before he does something he shouldn't do. So I've been living this way. This has not changed my life. I've been living alone now for nearly six years in a foreign country. <laughs> Only having mostly virtual and unless you count my cat. So I've had that quiet time now for quite some time. So it's, it's a wonderful place to be, but it's getting time to step out. So thank you all. And Shelly, is the light better? Okay. Working on it. Deb or Nita, you want to jump in? And you might need to take yourself off mute, I'm not sure. I don't think I was on mute. I don't, I don't know. Sorry about that. Um, my name's Deborah, and I live in sunny California, San Francisco. And today's spectacular. It's seventy-eight and just gorgeously sunny. And it was kind of hard to come into this meeting because it's only uh, it was five o'clock for me. And everybody's out in their boats and paddle. You know, keeping our social distancing, but out in paddle boards and swimming and uh, um, I, I, I don't know whether I'm supposed to be here tonight or not. I certainly enjoyed everyone's share. Um, I, I'm not feeling the same experience that you're all having right now. Um, what's showing up for me is betrayal. I feel when I look back over my life, I feel like I feel like I've been betrayed a lot, and I feel like we betrayed Mother Earth. And we talked last week about being outrageous, but. I think the outrageous part for me was covering up a lot of the deep feelings I have. 
and um, I I do I also spend a lot of time by myself, which is you know many ways many ways many enjoy much enjoyable. Um, I'm finding it really hard to to experience people that um, feel like they don't need to distance or they don't need to wear masks or they don't <clears throat> doesn't apply to them and um, and I'm feeling very frustrated that <clears throat> the news is spending so much time focusing on the deaths and the disease versus focusing on the planetary shifts and the opportunity for people to go inward. You know, it's, the mass media is just talking about such negative stuff all the time. And um, I don't know, there's a part of me that just wants to turn it all off and I want to be by myself. And, you know, Shelley's been great about, come on the call, come on the call. And um, I don't know if where I am is a good place to share. I don't know if other people feel this betrayal or this frustration that I'm feeling, but most of the time I've always tried to keep negative stuff to myself because I don't think the world needs to hear more of it. I don't know, maybe because Shelley was encouraging me to come on the call that I'm supposed to share this, that maybe more people are feeling this betrayal or this uh, frustration with It kind of feels like there's two things going on. There's the whole people that are focusing on the disease and the death and the news. And there's a whole lot of us like here tonight that are being above it all and focusing on the positive and the shifts and the changes and the moving to the fifth dimension from the third dimension. And that's kind of all that's gone on for me. So I'm a little bit, um, uh, I guess I'm in a little bit intense today. So. I'm done. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, oh, Tyson, are you gonna jump in? I was gonna jump in, but that's right, you can jump. Okay. So, um, I just wanna invite a pause here, and before I need to, if you're gonna come on and share, I'm um, just to take a pause to really hold because what's really amazing to me and before I even share <clears throat> is that this is all about the voice tonight and I had no idea. I never talk about chakras and throat chakras and I <laughs> not in, I don't know. I, I just don't. And yet tonight the voice of the field coming through was like, you need to say this and bring this up. And and I want to pull this thread through. So part of what we're learning as a practice here in Go to the Whole and Heart Resonance and being part of the connection field is really how to weave these threads, how to hold the both and, you know, how to hold equally the pain and the suffering. And as Deb, you were describing, you know, the deep feelings, the, the sense of betrayal. It's within all of us. It was my year journey into Australia and eventually took me to New Zealand, which is, right? So, so it's not that, it's, it's not that um, you're the downer. I mean, it's, it was so amazing. This, the, similarly, last week, what was so incredible was Joanne with, uh, was on with us and she was the one who brought forth that voice. She was in tears as well about, the earth and the mother and what was happening. And that is, to me, that's her voice. And she's inviting us as a whole beings in service to the whole to like, to just be present for, not to fix you, not to change, just to be present for what that calling, you know, and this is going, this is how she informs us, right? And without it, without your voice and without being here tonight, we might've just been in la la land, right? But, we are inv but you're inviting us to, to really, as, as Tyson was sharing, really embody and feel these feelings and to consciously listen and allow that energy of the mother or the field or the divine mother. And I know I can feel Tyson like just wanting to jump in here. 
to, to inform us of how we can hold that frequency. And you're just an empath. You know, hyper, and we're all hypersensitive at this point. And that betrayal is, like I said, it's within all of us and it's part of all of our journey. So I'm going to pass the talking stick to Tyson and then we want to just continue. So I, the invitation here is to continue breathing, feeling your feelings. That's it, you know, and then we'll collectively come and see, you know, what, what is that, you know, I mean, we have some amazing skill sets here and protocols and so I'm going to pass it to Tyson and we'll see where we want to focus this energy to support what you're feeling and what everyone else is describing as coming into their voice. Or Darlene was talking about, you know, the abuse, she's, you know, the abuse that happened. We've all had that, different extensions of that, you know, and, and what Brian and Tammy, everyone's been sharing and John. So passing it over to you, Tyson. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the courage of speaking your truth in the moment of being. And, and, and thank you for taking the time to be in nature and being on a paddleboard and being surrounded by water, which is like the womb of the mother to allow these feelings to come through you and not totally overwhelm you, but to make you aware that humanity is at a crossroads. And you're at that crossroads and pointing it out to us that, yes, yeah, some of us have taken the path more into the light, understand what it is to be part of a field of greater wholeness. But a lot of humanity is stuck at the crossroads, uh, trembling in fear and listening to that news that is just insistent, it just won't let up. I have a good friend, Wayne, downstairs, and he's got it on CNN. He's listening to American news and he's driving me nuts, right? Like, Wayne, turn that stuff off, turn that stuff off, or crazy making. But, but no, he needs to know, and I understand that because. Well, uh, he just needs to be at the crossroads. And being at the crossroads is a powerful place to be. If you can hold that duality and know that both of those truths are simultaneously present in this bifurcation that's going on on the planet. My past wife, who's passed on, said, you know, there'll become a time when we're going to have these crossroads. She talked about this three or four years, or maybe five years, or maybe 10 years. I can't remember. But she had this guide that says, download that there'll be this bifurcation in humanity. There'll be two paths that'll, that will show up. And one will be that humanity goes down this road towards a new earth, a new world, fifth dimension, full body line. I don't know what the words are, but you get what I'm talking about, which is what we're starting to express in this group. And then there's the other part of humanity that's going to go down the path of where they, where they were, into fear, doubt, shame, guilt, and all that. The important thing to remember is there's no right or wrong. Nobody gets lost in this journey. Everybody's going to be enlightened in the end stage. One path is maybe a little longer, uh, non path a little bit shorter, but nobody gets lost in this. So that's a good thing to remember that even in this difficult crossroads, I feel that I'm there as well. I feel like I'm sort of the cherry picker, you know. Oh, can you understand that there's another path over here that I'm sort of that that card you know the hermit with the light on the crossroads hey hey there's some light over here you want to step over here you want to come on this path and finding the people that are, are willing and able to hear that message as they you know as they start to go down that path of fear so you're at the crossroads and you're feeling all of this and blessings to you to be able to do that and remind us that the earth herself is speaking that pain and that suffering if we are brave enough to listen right if we can let ourselves hold that pain and transform it into the light. So going back to the original conversation we had on the last time, which is being radical, you know, being radically present with our voice. That's what I learned last time. And I have to say, it's taken me a lot of, I've had to become more courageous. So on my show every morning at nine o'clock in the morning, the wellness show, I'm speaking my truth, no holes barred. I'm saying what I'm guided to say, and I and I am now speaking my truth. And that's scary, because I'm used to being the silent warrior. I'm the stealth warrior. I want to stay below the horizon, right? Like, you can't see me, you can't track me, you can't find me. 
I'm going to change the world by doing geomancy and all these things, but you can't track me. You can't find me, right? Because I'm not in your radar. But now I'm up here and I'm babbling away, doing you know a rant every morning and saying it the way that it is. It's scary, right? I'm right out there, you know, ready to take pot shots. But I really believed in what we came to in the last time we met, and that is, I got to be radical. I got to come radically. My radical voice, my radical heart has to speak. No more hiding under a bushel basket. No more waiting for somebody to tell the truth and then agreeing with them. I have to step into the truth. So anyway, that's what's going on with me. And thank you for being you and, and, and expressing the fear that sometimes overwhelms me. I get off the show and I'm like, oh my God, did I really say that? You know, like, well, case it could be scary to speak your truth. It's going to be scary to be radical. But I'm, not, I'm going to do it anyway. So thank you. That's it. I'm done for now. Hopefully that helps somewhat. <laughs> um, sorry, I will explain while I'm laughing. Um, but I want to just give a chance. Anita, um, it looks like you're not on mute, but if you would like to share even where you are or if you feel comfortable to share anything, that would be great. And otherwise, we'll continue, but we're glad that you're here. And let's all breathe with the energy that's moving. Powerful. I'll just hold you in the field. But I'm going to keep going, Karen, for a minute, if that's all right. Okay. I just wanted to add something for Deb. Um, okay. Just hold on one minute, okay? So, um, and just we'll just keep breathing that open. Um, so I'm going to share as well, just a minute or two. Um, I'm laughing because of the fullness of the expressions of each one of you. And I'm laughing because if I had known that about Tyson, I would never have invited you into the consortium. <laughs> that you were the silent stealth warrior um, under the radar and cracking. Because it's hilarious to me. Okay, so here, I don't know if I can express this, but so, and Deb will understand because Deb has, I've known um, Deborah for many years and she, uh, was involved with my former husband and uh, experienced some of these trainings. And the beauty of why I was laughing was that I see how the universe um, allows us to meet ourselves, you know, in the, in the most profound ways. And really, you know, we're talking about dissolving beliefs that are holding us back from being that fullest expression. And, um, my former husband was one of those who was completely still pretty much stuck in living under the radar. And my biggest thing was about being honest. And, and so, you know, we don't realize how magnificently the universe brings us together with each other, the perfect group or the perfect partner or whatever it is to allow us to, you know, really live our soul design. Cause that's, you know, essentially what we're talking about here where, you know, that's, my experience of the growth of the seeding of the field that you know has even brought me here and and the magic and the mystery that allows for us to you know yeah to ride these waves of upset or sadness or fear or today i was like for the first time i got so pissed off at my dad you know and i was really angry and i was just like okay that's it you know and i don't need to go into the details but you know, whatever those feelings are that we're learning that it's safe to um, embrace them, but also learn, ha, expand our capacities to meet those seemingly circumstances that um, allow us to integrate, you know, more deeply who, who we be. 
and to be like Tyson was describing, be more radical. And how beautiful is that? You know, so when I was laughing at Tyson, I'm like, oh my God, I attracted, you know, in 2015, you know, this person that I had no idea was in his past, you know, not even his past incarnation, but, you know, in his journey here at this time, was working on that and, and has evolved to be able to see that, embrace that, and, and really make that shift. So, um, and really, that's what we're modeling for each other. So, I'm just feeling incredibly grateful. And the interesting thing to me about tonight, which I would have had no clue about, is that my really biggest thing was, there was a whole piece around support in my life, but it was about my voice. And, um, and there was a time in my life where I didn't speak, literally. Did not speak. It was probably... I don't know, maybe six months to a year where, you know, everyone would ask me what I thought about things. And I just, my answer was, I don't know. And I really actually believed that because I was so in fear of what I might say might be wrong. And so my past experience was, you know, being with a very dominating um, parents. And so I was always trying to push the boundaries at the same time. Um, you know, such a blessing that things evolve that, you know, I can be here now with each one of you and be radically shifting this, you know, in, into a voice that expresses and holds the vibrate, you know, we've been talking about vibration and frequency, it holds a frequency of the field. So, so I'll end with this, which is, you know, if you're coming in here new, <clears throat> this is a new experience, this particular group, you know, like our focus in Good of the Whole um, is that we are being mentored by the field itself and to turn ourselves as a collective because that's what shifts our experience, you know, and that we can't fix each other. We're, you know, it's, it's a horrible experience when someone says, you know, here, <laughs> you know, let me help you if I'm not ready you know, or without asking permission, you know, can I give you a suggestion? I, I go through that all the time with my <laughs> daughter. But, but that when we shift and we open to receive the transmission, you know, that divine love, someone was talking about the divinity, you know, that divine intelligence, because there is a direct experience of this unified field. And today, really, what I was working on was this document about helping people to understand resonance and the field and what that direct experience feels like. And it happens more, more prevalently when we're in a collective that's holding this. And, and with that comes this exponential, you know, greater than the sum of our parts kind of experience. So um, that's the invitation here is for us to just open, even if you don't understand what that is, to just go, wow, okay, I have no idea but I'm open to what this, what this feeling is that can settle, you know, my experience, settle my body so much, settle me in to such a safe place, a place of safety that I feel that, that freedom, because it's really about freedom, that freedom that, um, okay, I'm just going to say this, and I've never said this before, but my voice heals. My voice heals me and everyone else around me. And I've never said that to this moment. And that's the beauty of this experience is that that's the radicalness of the field, that it brings us and elevates us and, it, and we feel that exaltation. So I invite everyone to just really hold that for yourself. You know, that your voice, my voice heals myself and everyone around me when we're in that purity and alignment of that source field, that river of life that really invokes and evokes a level of presence that um, I don't know, just won't, don't even need to finish that sentence and I'm, I'm having that same feeling that Brian was talking about, that sense of, and it's interesting, I looked up the word privilege because someone came at me for saying that, but it, it really feels like it is a privilege to it doesn't mean it's a hierarchy today we were talking about we're not there's no top-down model here it's that we're standing side by side 
and you know it's it's really a privilege and an honor to be here with each one of you because you your voice elucidates that expression you know you can believe it or not but that's what's happening here so thank you so much and um i just continue to open the field i can't even believe how fast the time is going um, but definitely we want to take you know let's open it for about five more minutes so keep your shares to like one minute and then i think what would be really beautiful if we use our voice um and tyson's always really amazing at this too to do a group collective healing for ourselves, but completely knowing that it's happening for the planet. So we'll see how that works. So just jump in if you feel, but keep it to a minute so that everyone. I just need to jump in and say for my own clarity that I have known Shelly for a long time. I was never involved with her husband. He was my teacher. <laughs> I know you didn't mean that, Shelly, but at the same time, I just have to say that. And the other thing I want to say is that uh, over the years, it's been, in fact, I was thinking that today, Shelly used to be the silent partner when she was teamed up with somebody and she was very supportive, but it's really nice to see that you do step out and you're the lead dog now. You're not the quiet, silent partner. So thanks. Mm -hmm. Hi. All I'd wanted to say for tomorrow was I had a horrible week where I was up and down with my emotions. I was dizzy at times and woozy feeling, all kinds of strange stuff going on until the light bulb went on. And then I ended up on one of the calls, the, the connection calls too, and found that I wasn't the only one. The light bulb went on. I am an empath. We all really are. And I realized I was just feeling all of that that was going on in the world and Mother Earth. Once that happened, I'm so much better now that I, I realize it's, it's not all mine and I can just calm it down. So if that helps any, I hope so. It, it helped with me and being on that call and hearing other people were experiencing the same thing I was and my friend in Florida was too. Um, it's there's a lot going on and we're picking it up. So if we can just manage to keep some of it out, it's helpful. Yes, I know. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to briefly tie this back into the comment about um, the music of the spheres, that um, you know, each planet is singing its own song that makes up the symphony of the music of the spheres. and it takes all those notes to make that full symphony um, sound correct. And, but of course, it, without the silence between the notes, the notes have no value either. So, I mean, Henry knows this, that the sound is sometimes even more important than the notes. It carries the, the resonant field and the overtones. So I, I really thank everybody for being a note in this new orchestra of coming together, the good of the whole, as we learn to be more of a, a symphony together, a symphonic creation of uh, new sounds that we can put into the, the world. And it takes some bass notes, by the way, and some of the notes can sound a bit disharmonious. Disharmonious. Is that a word? Not harmonious. Not har no harmony at the lower range. So we need those uh, notes. And, uh, and you see, I can't even speak, so there you are. So I'm complete. I'm done. Just on the note of the spheres, if we think about our planet as a sphere rotating within the multiverse, and we've got some absolutely ma amazing astrological configurations at the moment that humanity hasn't felt for eons. And as empaths and as sensitives, we are being attracted and drawn by those energies as well. So not only the human condition is responding to that as well. So we're part of something so incredibly vast here. And we can only just do our bit for ourselves in our centers. And it's by the collectiveness that then we can make the change. So 
we just need to hold hold center and true and we're going to wobble all planets wobble but that's okay I wanted to take one moment and uh, I was very touched by you, Deborah. Uh, I lost my wife last year and uh, the deep grieving is, comes in many forms, but and part of it was betrayal. And then what happened as I rested with that, I realized how much love is attached to all those feelings. That as a matter of fact, if, if you can, if when I allowed myself to know that the energy of the universe, the energy in the resonance is a love energy and it takes on numerous forms at times. But you touched me with what you said and, and I think Tyson said the courage and that is how big your heart is and how much love you hold even in the expression of it, of betrayal and grief and sadness for what we've done to the planet, the base of that is love. And so as we transmute our ways on this planet, we're coming more into the love field. And so your expression of your grief and sadness and your betrayal is filled to the brim with a beautiful heart and it is love behind it. And I would just uh, be honored if you continue to come back to our groups and, and be part of this and, and know that all of the pains that we're feeling all over this planet are actually love in transition toward wholeness. That's all I have to say. And I'd like to add to that, that just a thought that came in was the field that is within us and how that meets and touches, connects with the larger field outside us. And the field within us is like the garden in our hearts that is so intimately connected to our voices. Uh, and just just to close, I saw a movie that was caught this called Alive to Possibility. It's a short movie. And someone who's a conductor in a youth philharmonic orchestra. And he realized at one point that he was the only one that wasn't making a sound. And he also realized that his mission was to bring out possibility in the youth, in all of those that, that he connected with. And one of the wonderful things that he shared with the orchestra, with all of the people in there, that when he wakes up in the morning, or when you wake up in the morning, he suggests, so, uh, to, to say, I wonder what is going to happen today. I can't wait. And so I just wanted to share that as well, just to opening to possibility. I'm complete. So let's just take a pause and just relax our bodies and open our throats in connection with our heart and our minds as one living system. We've been really loving this term called the eco field, or that we are these eco fields as everyone's been expressing. 
when you think of the of the mother and of earth she holds within her body all the elements and all relations you know the the animals the earth divas And, and a sense of trusting we're all here because we trusted something that called to us to come. And in this field, it never looks what we think it's going to look like. You know, just we are these imaginal cells. And let's just take a moment and really expand our vision, our perception of ourselves, our perceptions of even what's going on in the world, not to overlay anything, but just to take a minute and any particle of light that has just become a little bit brighter from being here, Allow that flame or to really expand and in, 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 in the full knowing that each one of us is a beacon and that we're navigating our way just as the earth is. She's just modeling it for us. feeling this matrix of where you are on the planet, where your feet. So you, if you think about in maybe Brian in, from, in New Zealand, they speak to the power of place. The indigenous people prior to the Maori, some believe, the water bearers, the Waitaha, you know. And we are all water bearers and the light that's shining is, 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 is been shared, that reflection. We are reflections of this cosmic consciousness. And she, it lives itself through us and as us and, and we're coming home where in that full embodiment We're free to express this light for another and for many others. And just see and feel into this field that for some is really invisible. And we just hold in our heart tonight that it can become more visible, something some awakening moments. You know, when we think about this beautiful web of light or the spider's web or this web of light just going around the planet and we're just holding that together here tonight. Just, so really feel that. You know, outstretch your arms or put your hands out. You can probably feel your hands tingling. Just knowing that somewhere, someone and many people are waking up just simply from this connection here tonight. And breathing into our bellies is breathing into the, crisp, the womb waters of the earth. And send your love right into those waters because there's only one water. And every crest of every wave delineates and dissolves those boundaries, those beliefs, those interferences, those distortions. And just feel into this planetary body Again, not overriding anything, 
but holding that that yin yang energy as one. And I'm just going to pass it over to Tyson to just complete this call. And I'm just going to take a few minutes after that to, to share into the field a um, little bit um, for people who are new and those of us who need remembering. So Tyson, if you want to Anything that's coming to you? Well, it's been softly raining here uh, where I live in the, in the shoe shop, and I am grateful for that rain, that blessing, that cleansing rain. And Divine Mother has uh, an energy that she runs. It's called the Blue Rain of Unconditional Love. And so let that Blue Rain of Unconditional Love cleanse and heal you and your loved ones, and the earth, and all around. And the theme of last week was uh, being radical, being courageous, where your radical earth resonance that, that transformed into your radical heart resonance, which then turned into today, really, that each one of, the, of us has a, a song that we're singing, a note of the greater wholeness. And so I think the theme to, for this call was to please, Set your soul song free. <laughs> Sing your joy into the world. To uh, find your note in joy and dance it, sing it, play it, uh, chime it, uh, whatever way that you can bring that resonant frequency into the foreground so Mother Earth can hear that you and her are one. Whether it's prayer, whether it's guidance, whether it's meditation, whether it's like I said, a crystal ball, dancing, singing. But please express yourself uh, in joy. This is a time to transmit all this energy into joy. Let's dance. Let's boogie on, baby. And with that, I, I'm complete. So I'm going to end with my voice. And um, inspired by having this energy of New Zealand in this space, because for me, it's incredibly meaningful. And it was actually how the Dowsing Consortium got started. I was nudged and um, so bear with my tonality, but Alex, I'm just gonna share a katakia to end this call. And usually this katakia is used at the beginning of this journey. Na te manamatanga ki te nako o te atua. Kia koha te manamatanga ki te nako o te tangata. Kia koha te manamatanga ki te ao. Ma te manamatanga, ma te aroha, ma te kaha. Te faka, te fakara nui te a, ti he moriora. We ask that the light of creation itself come into our hearts and minds, that we may walk in the light, that we may walk with compassion in our hearts, and that we may have the courage to carry and I'm adding this, voice our dreams into tomorrow. And may we choose the breath of life. So with that, thank you so much for joining us here. We're, we're, we're here every Tuesday night and it's really different. And please, for those of you who are new into the space and have come in because you've gotten a link from Tyson or a friend, um, go to goodofthewhole.org and um, if you sign in there or you look for the connection field under offerings, um, we have through the field expression as a first responders, we have a um, global response called the connection field. And this is a part of that. And it's really a space of inclusive inclusivity and love and exactly this more about deepening into this resonance and it goes from 12 to 5 Eastern time. Um, that bandwidth is expanding and at night all across the board from 8 to 9 or 9.30 are special offerings. And if you go and sign in, you will receive the weekly digest um, of what's upcoming and what's shifting. And we do have a, a global ceremony prayer um, with Chief Phil Lane and there will be a, 
some indigenous elders coming into the space and offering and hosting. We're working that out now. So the bandwidth is going to get more extensive. And if you're looking to bring your voice, um, you can email me at Shelly at Good of the Whole. Um, let's chat and you can learn more about becoming a mentoring steward. And we invite you to come host these calls, bring your voice, come into that connection field and, um, you know, really create a space where people can come and, and have the experience that you've had here tonight. So thanks so much. Blessings and love. And Tyson, love you dearly. And we love working, connecting, sharing the space with each other. So yeah, thank you so much. And have a beautiful evening or a good morning wherever you are. And stay connected. So it is. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Tyson. Appreciate it. We can connect hand to hand. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, stay connected. Bye.